Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the second day of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020 online tournament. This is the tournament played in the rapid time control. Uh, and if you want to know more about that, check other video, the first video from uh, Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge tournament. Uh, and uh, I explained there everything. And today, day number two, we had the four rounds, uh, six pairings and uh, because we have 12 uh, super grandmaster playing in this tournament. I also explained the first video uh, who are they uh, and I would like to show you the game between Jan Krzysztof Duda, grandmaster from Poland. His rapid ranking is 2774 and his opponent today Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen, triple world champion, he is number one uh, in rapid as well and his ranking 2881. Uh, Duda gonna play as white and Magnus Carlsen as black. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Duda opens with c4 English opening and now we have e5, King's English variation. Knight on c3, knight on f6, knight on f3, knight on c6. So a four knights variation. Uh, and here what white usually play is g3, sometimes uh, connected with d3 uh, and with this very typical dragon formation, very similar to Sicilian dragon, but this is actually, you know, reverse Sicilian with uh, e4 and c5. Uh, that's very one of the ideas uh, in this opening. Uh, however, Duda prefers e3. He played that quite often and now we have bishop on b4, uh, queen on c3. So so just if the if the knight is taken with which is main move in this in this opening so bishop on c3 is actually main move uh, queen on c3 and queen e7 and now uh, d4 is an idea just white have to be very careful here as the queen is already uh, on the same file with the king so uh, a lot of tactical issues here and uh, white have to be very careful but it's very nice and solid opening uh, however here Magnus Carlsen goes for the castle so he uh, he didn't bother to take the knight and Duda of course knows what to do in this situation knight on d5 attacking the bishop but as the bishop uh, should be uh, you know exchange already that that's not the threat uh, but also what to play as black uh, if you would like to take knight on d5 it's actually it was played sometimes but it's not really great for black as black simply lose the pawn because after e c takes on d5 knight is under attack so knight have to retreat and now we have queen on e4 attacking the pawn for the second time and also the bishop so probably bishop on d6 uh, has to be played and after knight on e5 white simply wins the, the pawn and black can do nothing about that uh, have to develop the bishop so c6 just exchange the pawns and knight retreat to f3 and everything is fine uh, black has slightly better development but down the pawn so whites you know are, are pretty happy here so uh, this could be played but it's not really great for black magnus carlsen play rook on e8 supporting the the pawn and now before e4 is pushed queen f5 Queen f5, very interesting idea, uh, trying to mess up the pawn structure on f6. And now a knight taking on d5 is still not the greatest idea. d6 by Magnus Carlsen. Now uh, opening the diagonal to attack on the queen, but first we have knight on f6. And now queen on f6 is of course possible. And after exchanging, we would have very, very similar position uh, what happened uh, on the board. However, uh, Magnus goes for g takes on f6. So he want to you know uh, the queen stay on the board uh, we have queen on h5 and now black has two ideas e4 is one of them kicking the knight but also uh, blocking this diagonal as you know it can be used by the bishop to attack on h7 so that is the one idea which can be played uh, but magnus carlsen go for a more aggressive one and he played d5 uh, and okay, the, the normal continuation here is bishop on d3. That is what is usually played. And after e4, c takes on d5, e takes on d3, and then uh, d takes on c6, b takes on c6, and b3, making a space for the bishop. And now bishop is on this diagonal, and the game can continue. However, uh, Duda goes for a slightly different line, and he played first a3. So kicking the bishop, bishop f8. 
uh, and now bishop d3 so very similar but just just a slight difference we have e4 c takes on d5 uh, e takes on d3 d takes on c6 b takes on c6 and now b4 so as you see uh, the pawns could stay on a2 and b3 or can be pushed further so that's what uh, duda wants here uh, there are some advantages of course of that if if white could have the for example uh, the knight on c5 that would be awesome but it's not so easy of course uh, here we have a5 this is a little disadvantage uh, because now after bishop on b2 magnus carlsen could go for very very simple idea but magnus carlsen don't want to play simple chess a takes on b4 of course is possible and after a takes on b4 exchanging the rooks and now bishop can takes on b4 and after castle white stands pretty good here the pawn down but look at this pawn structure what is this <laughs> this is just definitely not fun to play uh, as black however magnus carlsen choose that opening uh, just he want to complicate it even more and he plays rook on e4 very very good move uh, by magnus carlsen first it putting more pressure on b4 but it also controls g4 and now uh, the bishop can go on g4 with the attack on the queen and also attack on the knight and it can you know mess up the pawn structure uh, of white as well and that could be very very sharp and now what usually was played is h3 that was played already in the past uh, to prevent any moves like you know bishop on g4 that was the the one idea but also uh, b takes on a5 this is also the idea here just to eliminate this possibility of of winning the pawn uh, on b4 so these were two ideas however duda goes for a completely new idea here uh, it wasn't played before at least on the on the top level and he plays knight on d4 with attack on on c6 and here magnus carlsen has to think what to do now uh, he should go for some you know tactical shots as his pawn structure are totally messed up but he has has some open diagonals and open files so uh, that's what he should play in my opinion uh, however he want to fix the pawn structure uh, and he play queen on d5 uh, which is of course you know quite correct move just uh, maybe the idea is not uh, you know corresponding with this opening duda accepts that uh, that exchange so we have queen on d5 c takes on d5 and there is uh, another weakness on c7 however there are some pawns hanging already so you know already that on b4 this is hanging now uh, f6 is hanging uh, after the knight's move so a uh, very interesting position you know both players waiting who gonna take first uh, we have f3 rook on e8 rook on e7 also could be played however after knight on c6 probably would have to relocate so uh, we have rook on e8 by magnus carlsen and here Duda thought for a while and he goes for this pawn c7 so we have knight on b5 uh, rook goes back to e7 so now defending the the pawn and now bishop on f6 so as you see uh, Duda takes one of the pawns we have a rook on d7 and now king f2 uh, it's much better than uh, than the castle of course connecting the rooks but also the king is closer to the center just in case you know of the of the end game uh, we have bishop on a6 now harassing the knight so knights retreat to d4 uh, and now bishop on c4 bishop on c4 actually this bishop now uh, works as the as the pawn defending uh, these pawns yes but actually it doesn't do much more so this is the role of this uh, of this bishop for now uh, we have rook h on b1 so uh, duda moves the rooks and now gonna pressure on the queen side and now rook on a6 now harassing this bishop uh, and here the bishop could go for example to h4 would be very very natural and one of the plans of magnus could be for example uh, locking the queen side here uh, and after g4 bishop on g7 
uh, rook on e1 because if the knight is taken then uh, white actually could have very nice open file here uh, king f8 just to control uh, e file and uh, for example bishop on g3 uh, keeping an eye uh, on c7 that could be the plan okay so uh, this was possible however Duda don't want to you know uh, give this diagonal uh, for black so he play bishop on e5 uh, and okay, Magnus said, but this diagonal is very, very important for me and I want it, so he play f6, so kicking the bishop. But before moving bishop, uh, Duda first want to be sure he not gonna fall into this continuation. Bishop on f4 and for example, a takes on b4. Now it could be some idea. a takes on b4, exchanging the rooks, uh, taking the pawn on b4, which was hanging with the tempo uh, on d2. And now uh, king would have to be moved to e1 c5 and this already looks like pretty nice uh, counterplay for for black now this knight uh, would have to be moved and now uh, this pawn can can storm uh, on c file and uh, could be very unpleasant so uh, duda didn't like this idea and he play b5 attacking the rook so uh, we have rook on b6 by magnus carlsen and only now bishop on f4 uh, and now a4 locking uh, the queen side and also uh, as you see this pawn can't get any more support so it's gonna fall uh, so duda has nothing to do here uh, and now he starts to attack on the king side so we have g4 uh, bishop on c5 now uh, trying to eliminate the the knight uh, and now we have h4 uh, king on f7 the knight's definitely not going anywhere uh, we have king on g3 and only now bishop on d4 e takes on d4 and now bishop on b5 so winning this pawn and here duda got some interesting idea rook on b4 very simple idea also just double the rooks on the b file and uh, how to treat that c6 is the is the only answer because after rook a on b1 this is the threat taking on a4 okay that is the threat so uh, rook on b7 and everything is fine in this position so uh, probably duda would not go for um, rook on b1 probably rook e1 okay taking advantage on the e file however after rook on b on b7 uh, this rook is misplaced so it, it has to go around so after rook on e3 rook e7 rook e7 rook e7 and now rook b1 and the position is is pretty equal the pawn on d2 is 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 defended so no problems in the position king can move to f2 uh, exchange the rooks and uh, that's probably a draw however uh, after rook on b4 magnus carlsen first wanted to you know take the advantage on the e file for himself quite greedy so he play rook on e7 the problem is after rook a on b1 c6 doesn't work anymore because we have a rook on a4 okay so winning the pawn so seeing that he didn't of course play uh, c6 he played bishop on c4 uh, and now he gives this pawn as this was the the weakest pawn uh, in his position and duda of course goes for for the pawn so we have a rook on b6 c takes on b6 and rook on b6 and now magnus carlsen play bishop on b3 and here uh, all the fun starts three pawns against two pawns but how to transpose it to the win uh, so first we have bishop on d6 making a space for f4 but also this bishop is placed very nice it's watching at a3 uh, if needed it can also defend these pawns uh, so a very nice position for the uh, for the bishop uh, we have rook on d7 now the 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 rook still have to keep an eye on the bishop uh, and now f4 and here uh, what to play as black how to defend actually it's already lost for black but it's still a lot of technique to prove that uh, so first what is the threat here so f5 is the threat here for example rook on d8 f5 and now first this pawn 
controls uh, g6 and e6 so the rook always can go uh, to b7 so that is the first threat also g5 is coming g5 is coming and we will have two pawns and that's gonna be just disaster for black so h6 trying to prevent g5 uh, but now bishop on f4 attacking and king can't help because we have still um, the rook on b7 okay so it would not work uh, rook on h8 and now what white can do is bishop on h6 sacrificing the bishop why because after rook on h6 g5 and the pawn can't be taken because the rook is hanging so rook h8 and now rook f6 winning another pawn uh, and these three pawns just gonna progress uh, and win the game and this bishop is pretty sad in this position look at this it's just you know cannot get out and help there only this way but it's unuseful there so uh, that was the threat so Magnus Carlsen try f5 throwing the pawn of course uh, Duda don't accept this as this would just mess up his pawn structure uh, and he played g5 we have bishop on d1 so now the bishop can support the pawn as the pawn can be very easily attacked for example this way and uh, white gonna win the pawn uh, and here actually Duda could finish the game uh, in quite nice style with the bishop on e5 and this is just crushing uh, so for example of course this is the threat so for example bishop on g4 but still rook on f6 king on g8 and now rook h6 and now black actually has no moves rook b7 yes that's possible but now g6 is coming and now move the rook from the seven rank or not it actually doesn't matter rook b2 going for uh, you know uh, for some counterplay doesn't work this is actually checkmate g takes on h7 okay with check king f7 is the is the only move and now you know making the queen and of course that would be that would be just a checkmate yeah that is a checkmate so not this way so after g6 h takes on g6 sadly it also doesn't work rook h8 winning the rook okay so uh, that was chance for for duda bishop on e5 and support marching the pawns and uh, and that's just devastating however he play more solid and he play bishop on c5 it's still winning but you know uh, the game can can be longer uh, but definitely it's much safer against magnus carlsen so for example a3 uh, is defended you know d4 is defended and still uh, d2 can be defended if needed we have king on g7 by Magnus Carlsen and now king f2 so bringing the king uh, to the open file uh, but still Magnus Carlsen want to get with the with his rook on e2 just it's too slow we have rook on d8 and now trying to do it this way however rook on b7 with check king on g6 and now rook on e7 so uh, Duda takes the you know advantage of the of the controlling e7 so Magnus Carlsen go for rook on b8 and now uh, the problem is he stopped defending d5 and and I would like to show you just uh, just what's going on in this position it's very important here so for example bishop on g4 defending uh, f5 and now the rook defending d5 but these two pieces cannot defend everything because Duda gonna just you know uh, jump from the from the one weakness to another for example rook on e7 bishop d1 defending uh, but then king on e3 now attacking this pawn so bishop on c2 the problem is now rook a6 king g7 rook f6 now attacking this pawn uh, rook e8 even some counter attacks now are just too slow yes rook on e2 is possible but after king on g3 rook d2 the problem is bishop f8 with uh, with the mating ideas okay king g8 and we're gonna have a checkmate in the next move so this would be just too slow so this is the problem so uh, this is why magnus carlsen try to find some uh, some faster way and he play rook on b8 but this is already hopeless uh, we have rook on e6 by duda uh, and here king g7 of course was the was the best move here 
but after rook on e5 uh, one of the pawns gonna fall and the game gonna you know uh, gonna be ended so for example rook on b2 trying to to you know get some advantage bishop b4 just defending and there is no more counterplay can defend this pawn but cannot defend this pawn or or opposite so one of the pawns gonna fall and the game is lost so uh King g7 also doesn't help anything. Uh, we have king on h5. So Magnus tried to go for the h4 pawn as his last hope. But do that just calmly play king on g3. And in this position, uh, Magnus Carlsen resigned the game. Checkmate is coming. He can do nothing about that. Uh, and I would like to show you the final standings after day two but also the game so if you are a fan of some players if you would like to see uh, what's happened in their games uh, just check this one so this is round five as you see alexander grishu won against ding liren uh, and yu yang yi uh, against magnus carlsen so this is not the only loss of magnus carlsen so uh, you will see uh, you know the, the standings after uh, after day two very interesting and duda won against dubov so also today was uh, quite okay you know day um, for dudas yesterday he he was you know he had a terrible day uh, round six as you see here, uh, Dubov won, uh, Firuzia won against Duda. So uh, very, very interesting. Carlsen, Aronian won also. Uh, and then we had the uh, round seven where uh, Yu Yang Yi won against Ding Liren. So as you see, Ding Liren not doing really, really good. Uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda won, as you see, and the rest were the draws. And now round eight. And here, after round eight, Ding Liren won his game, uh, Daniel Dubov won his game, and he was, you know, uh, on the bottom of the of the table uh, after yesterday. But here, as you see, Alireza Firuzia lost to Sergei Karyakin. And now, final standing. So after day two, tomorrow we have uh, we have another round. So that's gonna be decisive for. Uh, players gonna drop they gonna be you know uh, throw out of the tournament so uh, for now if if the if the tournament and now it would be Jan Krzysztof Duda even he won against Magnus Carlsen he this is not his his greatest tournament but as you see everything is very close uh, Hikaru Nakamura is leading with five and a half points uh, and Sergei Karyakin as well, really great tournaments for them. But Magnus Carlsen with uh, four and a half points, Wesley So four and a half points, just one point ahead of Jan Krzysztof Duda, Daniel Dubov. Also Alireza Firuzia, three points. He won two games today, but also lost two games. Uh, and he has three points, but it's still possible that he can jump, you know. He has to win just just all the games uh, tomorrow. Uh, Wei Yi probably not going to uh, qualify anyway. But this is very interesting and... Uh, tomorrow rounds gonna be very very exciting so if you don't want to miss the games tomorrow and if you like the style uh, you know i present and and i show you all the scores and standings and uh, and the games uh, press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one